Hi everyone and welcome to this video. I'm Guillaume Pio and I'm gonna help you inking a portrait with fine liners. So we're gonna use small nib of the smallest nib I've got. Point five. If you got O1, it's good too. I'm gonna, going to start with the difficult part of the portrait. I mean the eyes. You have to move slowly at first because when you're outlining these lines will be at the end of the drawing, you will see them very clearly. The key is to do the darkest parts of the of the drawing first. So there is strong light over there, so I'm gonna do it very, very delicate lines, not too thick. But I have to define them. You can't let that blink. And as I said, uh, there is no choice. It's either black or black. That's what's interesting in ink. Try not to be very neat. That's when you're drawing hair. There is not a neat line. It's kind of messy. Same one with beard. We will see that later. So. We're going to add some shadow right away. Um, maybe doing the eyebrows with a bigger, bigger nib. Maybe just a, just a little bit bigger than O1. Uh, I'm gonna do it. Keep the light of the side of the portrait. But still, I'm um, gonna indicate that the eyebrow is not ending here. So, adding a few small hairs, eyebrows here. We're going to do that later. Uh, as I draw, I usually am constantly moving from a part to another. Uh, in order to build uh, the old portrait uh, in a consistent, uh, I want to be consistent. Was looking for the right word. Important part of the inking is to define the different values. So we saw that there is a light here, strong light here, a slider here, and it's very dark in the middle. That's tricky. This value. So the value of the shadow is going to be um, different if you do. Uh, thick lines according to the size of the nib and the fine liner you're using, but the space between lines will also indicate a stronger shadow or lighter. Uh, so pay really attention to, you have to be very consistent when you're drawing these lines. Using the same space every time, otherwise it won't be realistic. There is a strange light in his eyes, so try to do it very carefully. There is some light here, try to follow the shape at first. This is round, so I'm going not straight line like in the forehead. I don't care about the forehead, but here it's round, so try to do it as a little bit roundish. Not circles, but a bit more round as for the nose. Try to be very gentle with the fine liner. We're gonna darken it after that. I'm just saving the bright light of the side of the nose here, and then this is dark. I'm gonna use the medium nib. You can notice that for now there is no cross hatching, it's only hatching. I'm not doing some values, I'm just defining some of the basic uh, shape. And we are going to do some much more elaborate things after that. So all of that is lighter, lighter, going a little bit in the beard, it's not such a big deal. Very rough thinking, trying to move a bit faster than usually. This is in darkness. This is not dark, but still, it's not in the light, so we will do the wrinkling uh, later, just doing the basic shape at first. Right, and this part. Okay, this is. Mm -hmm. The ear is particularly uh, interesting there because there is round shape and uh, a lot of different shape you have to put in the right place. Drawing here and inking them, it's a really good exercise. This is lighter. So when this, when there is more light, I tend to space the lines of the etching. And then we can do cross etching. To darken a place uh, where there is a shape, I'm going to darken it with lines etching in a different direction. And if the lines are the space between the lines are less wide, it's going to be darker. So you can, in fact, you can do a very, very subtle transition and defining shapes in a very precise way. Here is the cross hatching because this is darker in the inside of the ear and darker and darker. This is the one of the key to achieve a portrait is to go from the lighter value to the darkest. 
So once you get uh, this way of thinking, you can draw absolutely everything. So cross hatching is uh, useful when you want to dark, to darken a, a, a shadow. You have to change the direction of of the of the lines. You know, when you cross hatch, you do that, and then this way, and then this way maybe. And after all of that, if you want to darken it more, you can do it in the uh, with my TV. If you do it from the beginning, and you have just to darken it a little bit like that, it's gonna look like a, a pattern, you know, just square, and it's it's not it's not pretty. That's my point. That's my opinion. So I try to do it in a different angle. So we are slowly building shape. Let's do a first round of moustache. So we're gonna use a, a bigger nib. This one is really bigger. You can see the result. So the line is going to be thicker. So we're gonna do. This is very dark, and we're gonna do some short lines. When you may see, try not to be too. For this exercise, for the moustache and the facial hair, uh, it's interesting not to be uh, consistent in the direction of the lines. You have to constantly uh, moving your your fingers or your hand to copy the texture of the moustache. It will be more resembling to a, a real moustache. Different lines, different size of strokes, 